Hello everyone and, and welcome to Advanced Pro University. Today we're going to discuss an advanced aspect of the manufacturing module, that being the multi-layer work orders and sub-assemblies capabilities. Now for those of you who are new to Advanced Pro Manufacturing, sub-assemblies are assembly items which are in turn components in other assemblies. Uh, an example might be creating uh, an alternator or a piston, which is then used in an engine, which is the example we'll be using today. Or you could use these same tools to make a food product uh, in a batch and then uh, going ahead and putting those into individual packages later on. Now, for more details on how to create assembly items or run a work order, please refer to our prior videos on those subjects. Today, we're going to be focusing on just those aspects relating to sub-assemblies and multi-layer work orders. <clears throat> so uh, here we are in the manufacturing module. Now uh, I've actually already created these items. We're going to jump into our products area where we filtered down. So here we've created an engine item. Uh, and uh, a piston item. So the piston is our base unit. It is our sub-assembly. So here we can go ahead and open this up and we can see that it contains a piston head and a piston ring. Now uh, once we've produced that, we're, we're going to use it as a part in our engine. So when we go to the bomb info here, you'll see that we've listed the piston off. Adding a, an assembly item to a another assembly item as a component is uh, the exact same process as just adding uh, any other component. You can just choose it from your list of available SKUs. So this item happens to be an assembly item. This item happens to be an assembly item. You just go ahead and choose them. Uh, let's go ahead and back out of this. Now uh, our build pricing info is going to take into account the fluctuating cost of our other items. So if we go and add components to it, uh, it's, it's going to fluctuate up and down as well. Now, uh, touching on the component assembly item, there is one requirement necessary to do a multi-level or sub-assembly situation, and that is you must assign a vendor to it, even if you just create a placeholder ven vendor. Okay, so we've now we've created our assembly items with our respective bills of materials. Let's go ahead and run a work order against the main item, which contains the sub-assembly. And we'll talk about what happens. We're going to go ahead and create a work order. Uh, we're going to choose our main item. We're going to set where we're building it and how many we're going to build. And we'll go ahead and proceed. So here's our work order. This is uh, our printable work order. You can see that we happen to have all of our components except our sub-assembly, which needs to be built. Now, as we covered before, we could go ahead and check off the vendor order option to go and create vendor orders to purchase these products from vendors. But in the case of our sub-assembly, it's going to default to creating a work order. So this is now going to spawn a second level work order for us to go in and create that, that piston, that sub-assembly item. And then we can come back and complete our, our primary work order for the finished product. So you work in layers from your finished product down to your sub-assemblies. Alternatively, if you're building to stock, you can also build all your sub-assemblies and then you'll simply have the stock so you won't have to have these layered work orders. Uh, you'll just be able to finish that product. So here we're going to make this a direct work order just for the sake of brevity. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this and process the order and it's going to make a work order. So here it made our work order for us. So here now, uh, as our manufacturing team, we can come in and view our work orders, and we'll see that we have a new one under open for the piston, for the sub-assembly item. Let's go ahead and open that one up. And it's telling us to go ahead and get our components. So here we have to go and finish the piston out before we can go ahead and uh, finish out our entire engine. So let's go ahead and, and make this piston. We're, again, we're going to do a direct work order this time. We won't be picking. Uh, I'm going to process this order and we're going to finalize it. Now I'm not doing serial numbers, but I could serialize my sub-assembly as well. Go ahead and finalize that. And now uh, we can come back into partially processed since we didn't have stock. 
uh, for our main assembly item, we, it, we've sent it to partially processed, which means it's stalled out waiting on stock. Let's go ahead and open this up. And now we see just like with a, work, with a picking slip or with a customer sales order, this item now says it can be filled. We can use this. So let's go ahead and uh, process this order. And that's going to allow us to then assign any serial numbers for the finished, uh, for the parts, including the sub-assembly and to pull from the given picking location or choose another one if we had stock in other locations. We can serialize our finished product once again, and we can go ahead and finalize that order now. So that now takes us, if we head over to our inventory levels and we just update this search, that's now gonna take us to a point where we have uh, less stock for all of our components. At one point, our piston level went up, now it's gone back down because we've included it in our finished level, uh, in our finished engine. So at this point, we have uh, taken all of the stock through the process from the, the many individual components down to the one uh, singular engine. Okay. Now, uh, keep in mind these are layers again. So uh, this idea of working from your, your base engine uh, maybe you, you started with a customer order for the engine. Now we've gone ahead and made the order for the engine. It made the uh, demand for the piston. So we went and built a piston and then we put that piston back in the engine and back into the customer order. Potentially we could go and ship that now. Now, uh, a couple of uh, things to note just before we wrap up is uh, with sub-assembly items, again, we could have gone ahead and just manufactured the sub-assembly as well. We can go ahead and choose uh, to just manufacture the piston, and then we'll just have the stock ready for our finished goods. So uh, this does conclude our lesson.